What's going on guys, Cayman here and welcome back to the Trinitel YouTube channel. Today's video is a sort of deck profile slash uh, tournament montage thing, if you can call it that. Basically a couple of days ago, which is actually the 10th of July. Are we in July or are we in August? We're in August. So on the 10th of August, I did take part again in a Nonetheless Rolls tournament. This time being a app tournament. As of recording this now, I am 20th. I did drop down to 23rd. Aim is to get top 16 to obviously get the free booster box. So not only did I reach top cup for the first time, I did actually finish top four. I, there wasn't a game for third place, so I don't know if we classed as both fourth, both third. Uh, GI did seed higher than me, so GI could be third, I could be fourth. We've both got the same rewards anyway, uh, which was a booster box. So I will open that on camera once it arrives. Into the deck anyway, which I did play. I tested this a couple of days before the tournament started. And do all my testing with Astro. Astro, I would say as much as it pains me to say it, is a better player than me. I will learn a special fast Rhino Rhino. <laughs> God damn it. And yeah, I'll scoop. scoop. And yeah, I'll scoop. scoop. Do that. So this deck, the uh, clues in the name, Crab Beaters, Crab Beatdown. It is a beatdown deck. Fives, whatever you want to call it. The idea is basically just to stop your opponent from basically having any cards on board. Uh, you can pretty much hit over everything. So we do this by running three copies of Moss Station, three copies of Moss Station, and then alongside that, three copies of the Viscerous. Uh, both crabs, super heavy hitting, six attack, hits over pretty much anything in the game, which is a one cost. Can probably hit over most two costs, three costs it won't hit over, but you don't come up against three cost Elestrals very often. Uh, there is other cards in the deck to deal with. Those. Also very good to stall. You can play your Moss Station in a attack with a Earth Spirit. Not actually attack, so it doesn't change the defense position. Got a six attack. No one's hitting over that. Or, same thing, you can play Moss Station in defense. Stall for a bit with the six defense until you get a few cards what you need. Both very solid cards. Uh, Moss Station is a little bit more expensive than Moss Station. But Moss Station does move to defense after it attacks. So really you want back row in order to stop it from getting knocked out. Because it will do. Saying that though it doesn't really matter. Because most of the Elestrals in this deck will just take out the Elestral. Which is taking you out next turn anyway. Viscerous. We all know Viscerous from the Earth Beatdown. 4 attack. 2 defense. Ends up being a 5 attacker with its ability with itself. Knock out Elestral. You can then cast another one from your deck or your hand. In defense position. Again it will get hit over. So you really want back row to save it. But if you get two out, it then increases your Viscerous to six attack, being the same as the Crab. So I actually took a different approach to this tournament. Normally, back row scares me a bit, and I don't like swinging into things in case you get shielded. Pete, well, in case you get shielded, Tsunami, whatever, changes your defense, stops the attack, you get taken out. But with this deck, I did play really aggressive. Didn't care if there was no back row, one back row, two, three, four, whatever it was, I'd still swing in. If they stop the attack, they stop the attack. If they send it to hand, it goes to hand. If they play Gorgons and you get destroyed, there's so many different ways to out your opponent in this. The Must Station can make the deck a little bit more expensive with the water, just because of the fact you've got to expend the water in order to change its stats around, and that is why we play free Galaxy as well. Galaxy basically basically just changes the stats around with any water in Channel Estral. So like I said, basically just means you don't have to expend that one water for the, uh, the Must Station to be a six attacker. I did find, though, in situations three galaxies was too much uh two's okay you can play one gets knocked out even number one to play but there was times where i had all three in hand or i had two and there was already one on board from my opponent which basically just meant galaxy wasn't doing anything if there's a galaxy on board already you're playing of one the stats switch back so you're back to a two attacker five defender so it kind of nullifies that out so potentially drop a galaxy for something else uh, a lot of people so there was caleb and being soldier running this deck as well they ran Dratakwa so that's an option there to heal your spirits back I'm probably going to try that out for the next webcam tournament uh, there's a couple of cards in this deck I did run which you've probably already seen anyway uh, which I wouldn't advise running you, you really don't need them I didn't really use them but I'll get into that in a second anyway uh, so alongside your galaxy there's obviously the best card in the game which is your triple Ash Rabbit. Everyone knows what Rabbit does. Mine did get PTA'd a lot. Didn't manage to keep them on field as long as I would like, but it was enough to help me. Uh, so you get to look at your top three cards and pick one from there, playing it to hand. I will say as well, this deck doesn't mind if you go first or second. Obviously, first gives you the advantage, 
but second with the six attackers means you can still hit over anything really played in the first turn. And then for the last Celestial, we are playing Lava Lift. Again, another card I don't think you really need. Lava Lift is great if you are behind on spirits. You can then target and pop a back row. If it gets chained though and it's a tsunami, you're done for. Alright, so I mentioned earlier there will be the odd occasion where someone's playing a two cost Elestral or a three cost Elestral, which you can't actually hit over. That is when these cards come into play. So we play three Earthquakes to take them out and two Restings. I did try running three, three Restings at first. Can get away with it. Uh, Resting is a great card. Uh, but I did drop it for something else, which ended up being really, really clutch. The Earthquakes are great. Really, really good cards. Like I said, take out anything you can't hit over. If your opponent's got a couple of Lestrals on board and you haven't got anything, you can Earthquake, play your own Lestral, and then you're basically back in the game. And like I said, we are running the free Ambrosia, which is definitely needed in this deck. I basically play it, again, going back to the Spirit Count, I haven't showed you it yet, but off the top of my head without counting, it's something like 8 Water, or 8 Earth, uh, 6 Water. So when I'm using the Ambrosia, I'll count how many Water, how many Earth I've got. I will then, whichever one I've got the most of, so say I've got 5 water, 4 earth, I use the water to cast Ambrosia, I'll bring back a water and then bring back 2 earth. It may look confusing with the spirit count on how to manage your spirit deck, basically just keep the spirits for the cards you've got in hand. Don't even try and think about, oh I might draw into this, other than your thunder spirits, because if you draw into a rabbit, a thunder spirit comes in handy a lot. But anything else, you will draw into plenty of astrals, there's a lot of water in this, there's a lot of earth in this. so. Just keep your spirits for what Elestrals you've got Also then run 2 Nectar. Very underrated card, I think. Not many people run Nectar. Or they didn't until the Elestriad. I think there's a few people run it in this tournament. But it's just a great searcher. Opening hand if you've got Nectar. It's two more cards. I've done it plenty of times in testing. I may have done it in the tournament, I can't remember. Where opening hand is good. There's no Rabbit in hand though. So you play your Nectar and you draw into a Rabbit and you get even more cards. Just puts you in a great position. And if you've got your Ambrosia to get your spirits back, it is basically a free draw. And then onto the Invert Ruins, which you don't really need. One card did come in handy. Uh, but I did play two Thunderstorm, one Eruption. Uh, I found with this deck, there's nothing to remove back row. So, apart from P Gust, well, the Lava Lift I run as well. But again, I only run two Fire Spirits, so it's either Eruption or Lava Lift. And I'd rather wait for the Eruption to be able to use that. Which you will see in the gameplays coming up. Uh, the eruption coming clutch plenty of times and won me enough games. Uh, people just didn't expect it. I went into the tournament expecting more more frost. When I use more frost, I run out of spirits quickly. So I thought if people are running that, I can just eruption game over. Uh, which I did a few times. Well, I did once. And then there's a few times where the opponent had five spirits left. I had eruption for three. Swing for one, swing for two. They've got one spirit left. Realistically, unless they get an Ambrosia, it's game over. Thunderstorm, I don't think I used Thunderstorm once. Uh, like I said, there was no... The only thing this deck lacks is the removal of Ruins. So you can add... I was looking at adding P Gusting, but it means bringing more spirits in. A different type of spirit with the wind. Uh, Thunderstorm is just expensive to target. If you're going to use Thunderstorm, I'd use the Thunderstorm before you play an Elestral. Just so that way they cannot chain it to anything. But for the webcams coming up, I'm taking Thunderstorm out because it is definitely not needed. And that leaves us with literally just the counter ruins. So we use 3 PTA, 2 shield, 3 gorgons, and my favourite counter ruin. Unless you're playing against water. PTA is excellent for anything you don't want left on the board. Uh, so, for example, probably the best thing to PTA is a rabbit. Yes, they get the effect, but the rabbit's done for then. You don't have to worry about hitting over the 5. Also very good if someone has got 2 more attack than you. Play your PTA, they can't attack then. Shield, I don't mind shield in the right sort of setting. If someone's got a big hit in Elestral with loads of spirits on, shield, bounce it back. It's not like doing They're going to lose the spirits, and especially if it is a 2 or 3 cost, the chances of them getting that back out are close to zero. But, again, can't be chained if targeted. That's the only reason why I run 2. Gorgon's Gaze, we all know what that does. Probably the best counter ruin in the game. Can stop everything. Well, it does, it stops everything, or you can save it for battle step and end up destroying an Elestral. And then Tsunami, like I said, Tsunami just sets everything to defense. That Tsunami can change a game. It can change a game so much. But if you are running against water, make sure to swap it out for something in your side deck. So I do keep talking about the Spirit Count, which we'll get into next, which I run the four Thunder, 
this was more for the rabbit so rabbit turn one obviously you need your thunder you could then draw into rabbit later on i didn't mind though every time i was attacked getting rid of the thunders because the rabbit isn't going to win you the game it could do don't get me wrong it could do it could find a card you need to win but the chances are you've got the cards you need to win in hand anyway uh, so i don't mind getting rid of these i did run four though just by the off chance i used thunderstorm so if you take thunderstorm out you can uh, get rid of the thunder two fire spirits again for the eruption or lava lift. use them how you want to use them i did try and save them for eruption unless i had to lava lift at a point uh, but like i said eruption came in clutch plenty plenty of times but then run the eight earth and six water like i said don't be scared of the numbers of this just make sure to keep the spirits you've got for the cards in hand if you can keep a water and a earth at the same time do it because you could draw into something i wouldn't go expending all of one type of uh, the spirit but like i said best thing to do is just see what's in your hand save the spirits for that so uh, game one we came up against online orphan who we did play in the previous webcam tournament orphan is a solid solid player he did make top cut again in this tournament meaning that's back-to-back -to -back tournaments he's made top cut uh orphan also did run the mirror match which I wasn't expecting, especially in game one. But what I'm going to do is, my plan was to show you all the games, but it's going to be a very long video if I do that. So what I'll do is I'll cut the games out which I'd lost. I will obviously say who I lost against. Uh, and then I'll leave in the, uh, probably the last ten spirits of each game. Not much back row, so we do take the Gorgon's Gaze. Orphan then does play the, yep. uh, the Nectar, which we choose not to keep. It draws his two cards. And he also matches with the Rabbit in defense. Yeah, yeah Rabbit's fine. So my thinking behind this play was Viscerous can't hit over Rabbits. There's no point having that on field if there's a PTA in the back row, which is going to take it out. So I play a second Rabbit, oh, PTA effect. which does actually yeah. uh, bait out the PTA. Uh, so we do get the search anyway, which we then go ahead and take our own PTA. Take that. That basically just means I've got a Viscerous to play. I then use Thunderstorm, which I said I didn't use much, and I use it with the, uh, the Spirit off of the Rabbit, which is PTA'd. And obviously one from the spirit deck. So Orphan then plays the Chariot Ride, which I believe he's the only person who runs this card in the uh, Crabby Down deck. Which means we can't cast any counter rune to stop what he's going to do next. Which is play Mostation in attack. He then hits over our rabbit and swings for one. So at this point I'm not worried at all because I do know we have got a lot of removal cards. One being the resting face down. Uh, which we do cast and we use it against the rabbit. Uh, just because we wouldn't be able to hit over the rabbit. I then know he's got no back row, so I play the Viscerous, swing over the uh, the moss with one defense, get a second Viscerous out. So he plays his own Viscerous here, who I do end up Gorgons in to stop the attack. So I did draw into the Earthquake, so I do play an Ambrosia here to get two Earth Spirits back, just to give me basically a free Earthquake. I'll then cast Earthquake. Oof. I'll then play the moss and swing for free, which can't be stopped as there's no back row again. Galaxy comes out and a PTA Galaxy, which doesn't change the stat, doesn't change the attack stats. They still got a five attack, so I know I'm losing moss here, but Galaxy's down. I can swing for two, potentially three next turn. So at this point, I'm thinking, do I pay for the PTA and take out the Galaxy? He's got no back row. I've got more attack with the Viscerous. I can swing over, get another Viscerous out, which you cannot stop. So. I choose not to pay for the pta so i do draw into another moss which just replaces the one which got ko'd i then go viscerous over galaxy getting the viscerous effect to get another one so we've got all three viscerous on field and i swing for two so the viscerous did get taken out by the moss play a gorgon's face down and then enchant moss station with a water in case that's a tsunami face down i then attempt to hit over the moss with a viscerous where we do see the tsunami played which now means we can hit over Again, Orphan was really unlucky in game two. No back row to stop anything. But he does go for another galaxy. Yeah. Which I do Gorgons using the water spirit off of Moss. Uh, which then switches the attack and the defense back around. I'll drag it because you can't do it this way. So I'm going to use the water off of that. So the galaxy now can't hit. The effect doesn't work. And we can uh, cast a Mustation. Which have four Lashes on field again. Swing over galaxy and hit for three. Taking it to 1-1. One, one. Taking it to a third game. So like I said, I will be skipping half of the matches out. So we start off with a Mustation, which is PTA'd. Which, again, not too bothered about because we've got a Moss in hand. So we just play that next turn. The Galaxy comes out, though. 
It swings for one. I never really pay if it's one damage. There's no point. And swing one. Yep. At this point here, though, I draw into a rabbit, and I think, do I cast the rabbit and get the, the search? Uh, but during testing, I played super aggressive, and it worked, so I thought, we'll carry on doing that. So we play the moss in attack. No back row again, as I must say, for Orphan, so we can't stop this attack. Boomback then does come out, uh, which has got more attack than the moss station, but we do shield that away. So Moss is back in attack, which now means we can use the rabbit also in attack. There's no back row to stop it. I did draw the eruption, so the eruption will take three spirits away as there's no fire enchanted elestrals on Orphan's Field. I can then swing for two, which will leave him with one spirit, which was enough to finish him off. Um, I'll then um, eruption. Three. And swing for two. Five. Well, got a top deck Ambrosia. So the second opponent I played against was Jai. I always play against Jai in every tournament. I get unlucky with the draws. Jai again is an incredible player. Always finishes in the top eight. Uh, but as you can see, the first game I was so close to winning. Uh, Jai has one spirit left. It then comes to me. I draw the eruption. The eruption would have won the game if Sol wasn't on the field. Fire enchanted. Game two, something very similar. Jai left with one spirit, I've got three, very tight game. Uh, she does have a board filled with Elestrals and Spirits. But she goes Sol into Rabbit, which I shield. But she'll actually come very clutch in a lot of occasions in this tournament. I'd say it's my least favourite counter room, but it, the times I played it, it did come massive. I then draw Ambrosia next turn, which was big. As you can see, we've both got one spirit, one Elestral on field being a Rabbit. Uh, so I bring the Ambrosia out. Nothing in hand, so I don't really know what to take. So I end up just picking one of each spirit. The thunder to re-enchant the rabbit. And obviously the water and the earth in case I draw into something next. I do choose to re-enchant the rabbit, as you can see. So it comes out water enchanted, which means it doesn't get the effect of switching rabbit to attack. Uh, this is where Jai is Jai and does an amazing play. So she casts Alter using the water off Solar. Uh, because it's part of a chain, Solar isn't destroyed. She then nexuses the wind onto Solar, destroying the rabbit but giving Solar its effect, changing rabbit to attack. This does leave her with no spirits in the spirit deck, so as long as I can hit over the Solar, it is game over. So she goes for the attack, which I then cast Tsunami, which puts the Solar into defense, which leaving her nothing to do, so she does scoop on that game, making it 1 1. So again, another match which has gone to the final third game. As you can see, this time I've got a few more spirits than Jai. I have a galaxy on field. She has the Zeus and Galax Air, uh, which she changes my stats around. Which I misplayed here, I know, but we do sort that out. It goes back to attack. And then I cast Tsunami anyway, so it wouldn't have mattered. I then draw into a Viscerous, which I play rather than the Mustation. Sorry, rather than the Mustation. Uh, which I then follow up with an Ambrosia, just to get a few more Earth Spirits back before I hit with Viscerous. And then I can get another one out. So I go Viscerous into Galaxia, hoping I can get the search, but it is Gorgons, so that stops that attack. But I can Galaxy over the Galaxia, which leaves me with a clear board. But at this point, I was too far ahead. Jai couldn't come back into it, so once again, she conceded. So 2-0 in the tournament, which I have been this position a lot of times. It normally goes downhill from here, which it started to do. And then drew Caleb from the Elestronauts. Really, really nice guy. After Caleb, I then played against Sausage, who went on to win the tournament. Uh, so massive congratulations to him. Uh, he beat me 2-1 with his Water Nexus deck. Uh, so at this point, I thought that's me done again. I've gone 2 and all up, thrown it away. Uh, but I did go into game 5 knowing my opponent win percentage was massive. It was something like 75% because I've been playing the big hitters. So all I had to do really was win this final game. And I've got a very good chance of getting top cut. Uh, so we come up against 7 Shadows who's playing Earth Beaters. Uh, pretty close with spirit count, but he has got a rabbit with four or five spirits. So what he does in this play is he disenchants from Demeter targeting his rabbit, giving his rabbit five attack. He then gorgons my Viscerous, taking that down to four, so he can swing over with the rabbit. But luckily for me, I do have probably the best counter run in this position, which was a shield, which bounces the rabbit back and literally just wasted seven spirits there. The game is still super close here. Um, obviously, I've got the two Lashels on board, but for the Spirits in Spirit Deck, really close. Uh, he has nothing on board to stall me, though. He does have the Counter Ruins, which 
could stop the attacks. Uh, but I do choose to enchant the Viscerous with another water in case there's a tsunami face down. And then we attempt to swing for free. But Viscerous is also then shielded. Again, I'm not mad in this situation because it just comes back out next turn anyway. And it's wasted two more spirits. So the shield takes two and then just the one hit for Rabbit, which he doesn't stop, which you wouldn't do in this situation. Um, so the one spirit in debt means he can't really do anything unless he draws into Ambrosia. Fair play to uh, Seven Shadows. He does go for the Mustation, trying to apply pressure. And like he says, during this, he could attack me here, take me out, but then he goes to defense and he knows I knock him out next turn. Uh, but like I said, we've got the uh, the removal on Earthquake, so we Earthquake the Moss, and then attack with Rabbit, and that's game one. So going into the second game against Seven Shadow, I had eight spirits, he had one left, so in a massive position here. He goes to swing over my Moss with Rummagen, so I Tsunami him, putting him into defense. So again, in a situation where I can hit over him, but I do draw into the Earthquake. He's got one spirit, so he can't cast any counter ruins to stop the attack. So I Earthquake the Rummagem. And then swing the moss for one. Making it 2-0 out of the best of three. Putting me in seventh position and my first ever top cup. So I do end up coming against Caleb again in the quarterfinals who beat me 2-0 previously. I was just happy to be here in top cup. I was happy with the starter deck. Whatever happened, happened. But the game come down to where we both had zero spirits left in our spirit deck. So we couldn't play any cards, so we're both just skipping turns. This went on for about a good couple of minutes. But I do know he plays the Dratokla, so he can regen spirits that way. He does have the Ambrosia as well. As you see, we get the Eruption, which would have been for game if I had one five spirit left, which I don't. Uh, so all we need now is the Ambrosia, uh, but we do keep passing turns. So a good couple of turns later, uh, Caleb does draw the Ambrosia. Which he, uh, which he does play with the spirit off of Mustation. And this is where Caleb does misplay massively. And it means we go on to win the game. So then with that water spirit, he then does cast Dratakwa. Bringing back two more spirits. At this point, I'm thinking it's game over. I've got nothing in spirit deck. He's, re he's healing. He's going to play something which will take me out. Game's done. So at this point, I'm thinking he's going to reheal again. Um, so I'm going to have to apply pressure somehow. I can hit over with Viscerous. It's the only thing I can do to really stop him healing to a point where it's, the game is too far gone. Uh, so we do attempt to swing with Viscerous, and this is where Caleb misplays massively. So he does actually cast a shield, but he uses his two remaining water spirits left on the shield. So he goes to re enchant his little water turtle, and then realizes he doesn't have any water spirits left. He does then play Moss Station. Uh, with the earth leaving him with one in deck and then he then goes flashing over galaxy and again i'm thinking i just need ambrosia to win the game if not i am going to lose and there comes the ambrosia we finally get it so we use the ambrosia so we use the water spirit on field to cast ambrosia uh return two fires which all we need eruption for game caleb takes game two again bringing it down to the third and final game uh, again close matchup I've got six spirits left, he's got four, he's got a moth. Then plays a Necroff, which is from his side deck to stop the eruptions. And attempts to swing over Galaxy. Which, I'm happy with this, I've got a resting in hand. There's no point in me saving the Galaxy or I can't play resting. I then play the resting with the Earth Spirit, taking out the Necroff, because I know I can hit over the moss. So Galaxy comes back out, which was actually the third Galaxy I saw in this match. Uh, and not a nogged. Yeah, I nogged in the first turn and drew two galaxies from it. I'd had one in hand already, so there's the third and final galaxy coming out, hitting over Crab. Which he which Caleb decides to Gorgons, which takes him down to one spirit. So at this point here I'm I'm pretty much shaking. I've never been in this position where I might be getting to a semi-final and winning a free booster box. And the game looks to be in favour of me, so he plays a Viscerous anyway, uh, with his final spirit. He attempts to go Mustation over the Viscerous for one. Do actually shield the, the Mustation. Knowing Viscerous can't hit over me. And then if he crashes it would be game. I then cast a Mustation with a Fire Spirit because I only need it to do one damage. And then crash with Galaxy and then swing for one. Ending the tie and making me go through to the semi-final. So like I did say, well, like I think I said earlier on anyway, uh, I did forget to record the semi-final. I lost 2-0 to Spicy went on to win. Uh, well deserved winner, congratulations to him. 
Um, I did forget to record though because we went straight into the game. Me and Caleb was the last two uh, battling it out. And I was expecting there to be a little bit of time left just to chill out a bit. But no. Straight into the next game. Forgot to press record. Got smashed. But here we are. First ever top court. We got top four. Uh, booster box should be coming soon. When that arrives I'll do a pack opening video on it. Uh, daybreak just around the corner as well. Um, I've got a parcel from Dan coming hopefully tomorrow. So I'll get that recorded and uploaded sometime. But yeah, that's been it for the deck. I uh, hope you've enjoyed the video. It's the first time I've done something like this. Obviously, there'll be a few mistakes in the video. It's the first one I've done. Um, I do want to do more of these in the future. I don't know whether to leave gameplay in or not. Um, so let me know in the comments. If you are interested in seeing the full clashes with the live reactions and uh, nothing getting cut out, let me know. I do have them saved on the computer. But yeah, until then, I'll see you next time.